like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this halfway point of the month of October, this October 15th, we celebrate the memorial of St. Teresa of Jesus, St. Teresa of Avila who together with St. John of the Cross was the founder of the, uh, was the, founder of the dis, a reform, reformation of the Discalced Carmelites, uh, a religious order of, of deep prayer and devotion, particularly there, there in her um, area of Spain in the 1500s. And so giving thanks to God for her witness uh, together with St. John of the Cross, but especially her uh, boldness as a woman foundress of so many monasteries throughout Spain, we give thanks to God for her, um, for her life given over uh, to contemplation and prayer and to devotion of Almighty God. And together as we celebrate with St. Teresa of Jesus, we celebrate with Holy Mother Church as, as uh, in the appointment of Bishop-elect Bill Byrne. Bishop-elect Bill Byrne as the 10th, di- 10th Bishop of Springfield here in Western Massachusetts, a shepherd who can lead God's flock here in our parts in our four counties of Western Massachusetts. So we continue to pray for uh, Bishop-elect Bill Byrne, and we continue to give thanks to God for uh, his election by Holy Mother Church and his appointment by Pope Francis just yesterday. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us enter into this Holy Mass. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection, grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Sing 
Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute, in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law! You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospels recently, we have been hearing very charged language from our Lord Jesus. Very often we have heard, in the, even in these days, how he... Uh, how he Laments, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe to you, Pharisees. Woe to you, scholars of the law. He's lamenting the fact that those who were given the very grace of knowing God as a chosen race, a chosen people, that covenant that was established in the law, that has been, as it were, abused and misused and not directed towards the salvation of souls, but became merely an external constraint. And, and, and the sending of the prophets was no longer received with great joy, but rather was, came upon with destruction and, um, and, 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 and the refusal to hear the words of the prophets and the teaching of the law. In, in St. Peter, in St. Paul's writings to the Galatians, he's, he's spoken to us of the Spirit and the law. He's spoken to us of, of this great mystery wherein you and I have been given this grace that is the very grace of our justification and fundamentally the grace of our salvation in Christ Jesus. We've been given this grace of being saved. And God is constantly reaching out to save His people, to bring His people to holiness. Not merely for some sort of perfection of virtue, but rather to holiness so that we may know life. God wants us to know life. And not merely the woes and the trials and the tribulations and sufferings, but to know it through that very grittiness, if you will, of our human condition, to know the perfection of love, which is eternal life with God. God who is love. And in perfect eternal union with Him, which we call heaven, we will know love to its full. God has given us the law and the prophets 
prophets who, who, who speak God's word so that we may know the way. Prophets who help us adjust our path as a society, as we hear in the Old Testament, or as individuals who come to read God's word. The prophets who give us direction so that we may know God's will. And, and, and prophets share God's word. And God's word is given to us in a clear and definitive way in His law. That law which establishes right order. That law which is expressed, yes, in human law, and we certainly are seeing an expression of, of, the, of the concept of law in society, as we see here in our, in our own nation, with the, um, with the nomination of a justice to the Supreme Court, and all these conversations about the, the nature of law, the establishment of law, and the interpretation of law. And while at the same time we could cry that our nation seems to have completely forgotten how law is to be established, reflected from divine law in human law, and interpreted in our own system of governance, while we could cry that there's this confusion, let us return to what law is, but a, a right order of relationships. Our relationships with each other in society, the right order of our communities, but it fundamentally comes from that right order with Almighty God so that we may know the way, so that we may not fall from the narrow path that leads to life, that leads away from those sufferings of hatred and, and personal discord leads to unity and, and, and fullness of life. And St. Paul has been, as he was speaking with the Galatians, was inviting us to recognize that we who are reborn in Christ now have no longer, as it were, the need for the crutch that is the law, because we have received the very word that is incarnate. That, that path that the Lord has established for us to follow, instead of just telling it to us from on high, instead of just sharing with us in some sort of relationship of distance, He has made it a personal encounter in Christ Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life, we hear the Lord say. And so, while the law is the great help for us to know the path, now we are joined by the one who is the path himself. Now we are united to the one who is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. We are united with the one who is divine and we though human and makes a marriage of the two. And we can follow that path as we follow Christ intimately, personally, and lovingly. Now he's writing to the Ephesians in our readings today. And, and, and we are being united again to recognize no longer this distinction, uh, this, 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 this consideration of spirit and truth as united in Christ Jesus, but we are being, as it were, we are maturing in this faith. In Christ we have redemption by his blood the forgiveness of transgressions, of our sins, of our breaks of the law. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, in accord with his favor, 
that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In wisdom and in insight, he has made known to us that very plan that he has set forth, that mystery of his will, of all things in Christ. And so today, as we aspire to holiness, to follow the path that leads to peace, not according to external constraint of the law, but rather to that personal and intimacy of the one who is that word made flesh, let us find courage. Let us find hope. And in the witness of St. Teresa of Avila, we can we can see the full breadth of that spirit alive in us. There is a statue in Rome in a church, uh, in a church just, uh, just in one of the busy streets of Rome. And it's a statue by Bernini. Bernini, who was, uh, who, who was such a master sculptor that he could make flowing waters or wavy robes uh, out of marble, out of that s rock and stone. He could make it look as soft as fabric. And there is this statue of St. Teresa of Avila in ecstasy. And so often we understand ecstasy only in the physical sense, only in that sense of, 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 of jubilation, of, of external... Um, influences upon ourselves. But Saint, in that statue of, Saint, of Bernini, of St. Teresa of Avila, she is in ecstasy in that contemplation of the Lord. And, and when we can be moved to, to even physical joy, expressed in that physical sense, because of that intimate encounter with the Lord our God in spirit and truth, then perhaps we have now understood what the law and the word and all of our faith orders us towards. Perfect joy and love in the will of God. Perfect joy and love in that union with God. That personal encounter. How will we live today in response to God's call? How will we live today seeking that great ecstasy of being united with the Lord our God? Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, let us stand and bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. And in a special way today, we remember the 
continue to celebrate the appointment of Bishop Elect Byrne. We also continue to pray for him as he comes to, uh, to accept the responsibility of shepherding God's flock here in our Diocese of Springfield. And so we pray for Bishop Elect Byrne and, and all the intentions uh, of God's will in his life and in our, the life of our diocese. We pray to the Lord. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa was pleasing in such great measure, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church sped throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, William, our Bishop-elect, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Teresa of Avila and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Receive the communion with the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. 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 I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. Pastor Lips is food, the Lord may possess and purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be healing for eternity. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord our God, that your obedient family, whom you have fed with the bread of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa and rejoice to sing of your mercies for all eternity through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, as we pray for our bishop-elect, uh, Bill Byrne, Father Bill Byrne coming from the Archdiocese of Washington, a pastor of uh, of various parishes as well as college ministry. Let us give thanks to God for uh, his appointment here in our midst and let us pray for him as he uh, takes up his charge. Also just an invitation to each and everyone uh, for tomorrow. 
we have a beautiful occasion to celebrate around the heart of our diocese at the cathedral in Springfield. We have adoration from 12 to 3, as well as adoration with, with praise and worship, with music and, and prayer um, from 7 to 9 in the evening. And it would be a wonderful occasion if, if your time allows uh, to come and pray in that, in that uh, home church of our diocese, in that church where we find our very link to the apostles in the successor of the apostles that are our bishops. So if, 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 uh, if you have the time, please put that on your schedule and, and please do come. Finally, also just uh, we prayed today for, for Jackie Morgan, who, who recently lost her husband and who will, be, um, who, who will be buried today. So please pray for Jackie Morgan, who joins us often for daily Mass, as well as Elaine Bowler. You know that Elaine uh, joins, us, joins us very often sitting here on our side as well. And she, uh, for the past several weeks, she has been um, uh, convalescing at home following back surgery. So please do pray for her as well. And all those who join us for daily Mass and all of the intentions that are brought uh, by each and every one of you. And certainly as we pray for all of our families and our communities in Agawam, so that we may be united in a very powerful and bold way to the very living Word of God, who is Christ Jesus himself. And so let us recognize the power of his will, of his Word, manifest in our lives, in our society. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be